This is Hadrian Radio coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KA Radio production. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Radio Hadrian, week 16. Coming to you at the end of what has been a very difficult, emotional, and increasingly tense week following the referendum that took place last Sunday in which the Catalan people overwhelmingly voted yes. A week later, Catalonia is still not independent. I'm going to ask David some questions based on my own reflections and get his views on the situation here. So I have David sitting here with me today, so we're going to do a joint English program today. Okay. Good afternoon. Hello. It's d a bit difficult to really know where to start with all of this because... Everything keeps changing continually, yes? Well, the basic things don't change. A lot of things of what we're going through is a psychological warfare. We need to make an effort to see through, through the intoxication and realize that Catalonia at this moment has given two mandates, one in 2015 uh, for independence and one the 1st of October, and we're still not independent. That's what's relevant. Everything else... Is like the prestige before the final trick, which will be announced next week. Okay, okay. Um, but in terms of the, the things that have been happening this week, what I have picked up from conversations with Catalan people and with Spanish people is that there's increasing fear. Um, fear, tension, panic, which of course is all part of the, the, the grand plan. Okay, this is like being in the Truman Show. For those people who have never watched the Truman Show with Jim Carrey, I would suggest very strongly that you do watch it because it is one of the most interesting films ever. And sometimes we feel as though we are in the Truman Show. What events have taken place this week that are installing fear into people here? Well, there's different kind of fear. One is that uh, big banks like La Caixa and Banca Sabadell and Gas Natural, which are the three most relevant uh, Catalan companies, are moving uh, their seas to outside Catalonia with a movement that is made legal by changes in law that have been brought overnight. And then there's fears that people won't have access to their money and operation fear that is so well known by people living in Scotland. Yes, yeah, we had the same thing in 2014 where elderly people were scared that they weren't going to have their pensions and there would be no money. And indeed yesterday I actually had a conversation with a taxi driver who said exactly this. She was a Spanish lady, she was against independence, and she's entitled to her view, but her biggest fear wasn't independence, it was that there was going to be no money and she wouldn't have her pension. Okay. Um, that, I, would, I would like to add to that, that there's also fear because the continuing uh, police presence from Spain here that have left after the referendum, but that a lot of really pro indie people have a different kind of fear. And it's the fear that will be betrayed next week and independence won't be declared, even after 900 people have been uh, injured by Spanish occupation forces. That's a fear that's growing as well. We are afraid they might betray us yet again. Yes, again, yes, again. Um, some of the other things that I've come across this week have been, for example, Gerard Piquet getting involved. He was... Um, on television, uh, being very emotional, he was crying. It was it was a wonderful image. Um, what do you think of this involving sports people? Well, it's interesting because first, Barça is like the most known institution in Catalonia, and secondly, football reaches uh, targets in the population that cannot be easily reached by politicians and other sorts. So, so this is an operation that has to reach everybody. Piquet has been. Um, put there for the last two years as trying to defend democracy and Catalan rights. But this has been a psychological operation preparing him for this day. He's come out now. He hasn't left Spanish team. He says that he's not an independentist. He says that negotiation is needed. And all these things which encapsulates or epitomizes what this is all about. This is about no independence for Catalonia, but keep the pretense that we live in democracy, murder independence for 50 years, Avoid the domino effect that the Catalan independence will bring others, and most of all, protect the molds that are running our process. Because if we discover the trick in Catalonia, people in Scotland, Euskal Herria, and everywhere else in the world 
will discover that being betrayed by their own side. They are controlled opposition to make sure we never get independent. Iniesta as well has appeared and Barca has offered to mediate between Catalonia and Spain. Which is funny because to mediate you're supposed to be in the middle. So, so we have um, a football team offering to mediate between two governments for the independence of one of those governments. Yes, but for those not knowing in detail the Catalan process, nothing is too surreal for this because we are debating about a referendum that was not in the roadmap and that it wasn't in the roadmap before Muriel Casals was murdered. So the referendum could be included because you cannot rig a referendum if there's not a referendum to rig, is it? Okay, well, you just mentioned the word surreal, and yesterday um, one of the things I've been reflecting on was the surrealism of all of this, and it made me feel as if we are living in a Dali painting. Well, if Dali had lived uh, nowadays, possibly he would found inspiration in our politics and in Absolutely. our nowadays yes. life. We we it's five days after, well, it's a week after uh, independence should have been declared. Yeah. But then our own side put a tempo of forty eight hours. But then they're they're milking it and they're making it long, so we don't actually know what happens. Our grassroots organizations like Assemblea Nacional Catalana or Omnium should be putting pressure on our leaders to declare, but they're disappeared. At the moment, as well, the latest deadline is Tuesday, correct? Yes. What can we expect on Tuesday? I think we can expect betrayal, which can be delivered in a number of ways, like some uh, inside members of the running party voting against it, or they're declaring independence but with conditions or loopholes or something, something not very different from the Edinburgh Agreement, which was essential to rig the Scottish referendum. Now they have to put ways that if mediation arrives, they can stop unilateral declaration of independence. So wait for the inestimable uh, dangling carrot and the frog to keep being boiled little by little. Absolutely. Um, the cultural organization Omnium Cultural, um, as we have said in previous programs, has been highly instrumental in organizing people, actually manipulating people's brains, to, first of all, cry for democracy, then to cry for the capacity to be able to vote. Now, what are Omnium doing now? Because the people have voted and they voted yes. So what's Omnium going to do with itself now? We don't know what they're going to do, but what they're doing nowadays is nothing. I mean, this uh, mediation and negotiation that has appeared is uh, only traitors can negotiate when you've won. It's the losing side that should beg for negotiating. And there, we, we received some messages telling us to enjoy life and get ready for next week and support our government and parliament. That's because it's expected that our government and parliament will betray us. I have to say that no, nothing of what you would expect after the referendum happened. In the, the next day, some things should have happened in case that independence was about to come. And if you find it interesting, we can go. Yes, later yeah, th into there's it. a couple of things. Um, on that note that I'll return to, but the message that Omnium Cultural have now sent out to people, um, so when you say sent out, you mean through social media and through notices and petitions? I, I'm not sure because I haven't seen it yet. They're telling people to enjoy life and enjoy their families and enjoy the government. What? That's a strange message. Yeah, but then again, the, the plan has to move in stages. So now they manage to persuade people to sing about democracy, voting, referendum, and not to sing about independence, because we yes, have to yes. understand that this is a master plan. They had to push people through the motions of referendum, where Spanish police exerted violence, but with the connivance of our side, they were together on this. And now it's absolute silence, because they're waiting for something to happen. Maybe negotiation will appear before Tuesday, whatever. But certainly they're not putting pressure on government to declare, which is what made millions of people to face Catalan and uh, Spanish police last Sunday. We want independence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is something which I've talked about in the last two programs, at least, if not all of the programs, is that the, the cry should have been for a declaration because, as we know, Puigdemont had, he already had a mandate. And now he has two mandates and he's still skirting around and working against what the people have voted for. I think that's summed up in two sayings. One is the Arab proverb, 
if you want to do something, you find a way, and if you don't want to do it, you find an excuse. Uh, in the Catalan process, they found 75,000 million excuses, not only one. Yes, yes. And the other is, if somebody lies to you once, it's his fault. But if he lies to you more than once, then it's your fault. They've been lying to us so many times that we didn't win a mandate, that a referendum is needed, and all these kind of things that it's a non-stop lie. So now we have to choose between independence and our government and parliament, because they're not the same thing. They're opposite things. Our parliament and government is run by our enemy. Why do you think all of these people, millions of people, don't put pressure on Puigdemont to declare? Why? After the, the frenzy of leading up to the referendum, why don't these people say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Put them on. You've got two mandates now. What the heck are you doing? Um, but I have to say, and I hope this is understood, because sometimes these things need to be very finely viewed. The control of Catalan society is not very unlike what you would expect from Nazi Germany or Stalin's Russia or Franco Spain. Every media, social organization, Facebook group, political party, everything... And anything that we think to work for independence is controlled at direction level by our enemy. So every message we get is fine-tuned to make us through the motions. People want independence, but they want it through the channels that have been offered to them. So the only needed thing is to move out the flutists that are moving the 3 million independentists in the direction opposed of independence, and people will follow. It's a bit like the Emperor's New Clothes, the, the, um, I think it's Hans Christian Andersen's story, where we have a little boy in a big crowd of people watching the Emperor going by, and the Emperor had been fooled by his strategists and his advisors into wearing what he thought was a new outfit, which he thought was beautiful and expensive, and in actual fact he was stark naked, and it took a little boy to say, look, the Emperor has no clothes. We don't, we need more little boys. We need more little boys. Radio Hadrian is doing that. And that's why we've been prohibited from spreading this program as we normally do in Facebook groups. So we ask people to help us. We need more people saying these things. Because the difference between thinking these things and saying these things about treason is the difference between having our two nations, Scotland and Catalonia, enslaved or getting independence. That's the difference between thinking something and being uh, able to say it. So we need more people speaking the truth if we want independence. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Um, th the word that um, comes to mind at the moment, which is being banded about by the media, is dialogue, negotiate. And of course, this is what Rajoy stated. Uh, what day was it? I think it was on Wednesday, two, three days after the referendum and Rajoy said, okay, now Catalonia, you come and you negotiate with, with us, All right? They're not going to give, you come and negotiate. And what I was reading this morning was Madrid saying, big signs in Madrid, in Gran Vía, in Madrid, written in Catalan, saying, talk, we, we now talk, we now talk, but without your flags. Is talking going to achieve anything? Or what is talking going to we achieve? We need to... Uh, that's why learning... Sorry, um, I should just interject there because when I say is talking going to achieve anything, I don't want people to think I'm advocating violence. I'm, I am massively in favour of negotiating, but in this particular case, what will it achieve? But first I need to clarify something that might seem uh, uh, irrelevant or redundant, but it's not. To negotiate, we, you need to conflicting parts. And that's not the case here because our so-called negotiators work for Spain. So it wouldn't be a negotiation, it would be a surrender that they would disguise as negotiations. I think that point is very important. We need to learn and visualize reality as a film. The producer and director of this film is Spain and they have a happy ending already filmed. Mm -hmm. Now they only need to get us through the motions, but negotiating was the plan from the start. That's why Spain didn't find the ballots because they were not looking, the, the ballot boxes, they were not looking for them. That's why violence was applied to force. We announced it in this program some time ago. They need uh, intervention of abroad to force a negotiation.
to have a Scottish style referendum in 2019 that be, will be rigged yes, and will lose. So everything what we're seeing is a charade, a charade where 900 people have been wounded. Okay, I was, and I was going people to have come, been scared. Okay, you, you jumped ahead past the, what I was going to ask you next, but that's okay. I'll go back to it. Um, if a dialogue does take place between um, Carlos Puigdemont and Mariano Rajoy, out of that dialogue, how likely is it that another referendum will be planned for 2019, during which time more campaigns to keep people away from independence, to keep people stopping from asking and demanding a declaration? Well, it's very probable for three reasons. One, they have totally silenced the truth about the Scottish referendum 2014. They've been talking, saying, we wish we had a Scottish-style referendum for years. As recently as last week, they keep saying, that's one. Secondly, they've let us believe these two non-real referendums that they would win the third referendum. So it's giving us confidence that we would win. And thirdly, I'm the person who has stated more clearly that referendum in Scotland was rigged. And as you know, they kept me interned and they tortured me to silence her. Okay. And... Um, the other thing which I thought was very interesting was the king. Philippe VI waited several days before he spoke about the referendum. What do you think about that? Well, uh, everything that should be present if Catalonia was on the edge of independence wasn't there. It's something very similar to what happens in false flag. But things and images that should be there are not there. And that tells you that something we don't not seeing that's going on. Uh, there should have been unionist march before the referendum, and they were not. Secondly, the stock market should have collapsed the day after the referendum that opened the door to independence, and it didn't. It only moved like one twenty one. The, the king didn't appear the next day. The, the stock market. Yeah, and um, I was coming to that in a moment. So um, these two thing, these two events, the king's speech and the stock market moving ever so slowly after the referendum and then suddenly dropping considerably. These two events are linked. I was coming to, to that. As, since in last week's programs in Radio Hadrian and in our Facebook, we have uh, noted that nothing of the things that should be there were happening. They've had, had to counter-program us because that's what they do. They were not very good at lying to people. So they needed to invent a speech from the king that didn't appear there for two days to have an excuse to sink the stock market that should have sunk on Monday and then they do it Wednesday after we noticed that things were not going the way to independence. What will happen if Puigdemont does declare? What do you mean what happened? On Tuesday when he, he returns, if he makes a declaration, what do you think will happen? I know I'm asking you to speculate, and I said at the beginning of the program it wasn't going to be speculating, but a lot of people must be thinking this. But uh, there are several ways to declare, because now they're talking about putting the condition that if mediation is over after it, so it won't have effect, and sometimes are saying that they're going to declare independence, but after elections that will happen in six months, and if those elections we don't have a majority, then declaration of independence wouldn't happen. So first we need to see not only if they declare, but if it's irreversible, immediate and unconditional declaration, because otherwise we're again in a surrealistic trick. So you mean if if he declares Okay, if Puigdemont does declare, do you would Without you, tricks, like without tricks if he actually <laughs> decides he should do what he should do. And it would be what the people want, but do you think that he would get away with it? Would there be more violence? Of course, that's what people expect. Uh, we, we don't know exactly what the powers that be have planned because we have to realize that it's them organizing all this. Everything up to now is how they plan. The violence, the ballots not being, ballot boxes not being found, everything is under plan. So everything is how they plan it to push us towards this referendum. The important thing I want to say is if they declare independence, it will be because these events have been telling that they're, we are being tricked and they're only doing it to protect Scotland from becoming independent. I need to explain this. Now, people living uh, living dissidents in Catalonia 
have strong links with Scotland and with other movements in Europe. And we, we know that all those movements are infiltrated and run by our enemies. If, if they see that there's a possibility that the whole New World Order might collapse starting in Catalonia and they would lose Scotland, Euskal Herria, Flanders and everything else because infiltration would be discovered, they might be willing grudgingly to declare independence in the worst possible terms to avoid uh, European Union and NATO breaking up. What message do you think? Um, last week there were a lot of Scottish people um, took flights and came over here. Some people even came just for the day of the referendum to show their support um, to Catalan people naturally. What message would you have liked those people to take back to Scotland? Well, I would like, but it's difficult for them because no, there's no information about the truth being spread n neither in Catalonia and Scotland. So it would be great that they would say that uh, we are about to be betrayed. But it's very difficult because most Catalans haven't awoken to that yet. So when a Scottish person comes here and speaks to the mainstream Catalan independentist, he only produces what our media organization and social networks are produced, which is engineered by Spain and passed on by infiltrated agents. So it's, it's totally very difficult to get to the truth. So they really are taking back the official, the official Omnium line. Omnium and INSA and yeah. everything else. The, the truth don't have a space in mainstream media in no country in the world. And until we realize that, we just uh, pawns in a game we cannot win. In, in my dream, I would love to think that there are some Scots people out there who have got their eyes open. I know, I know there are one or two people, not enough, but who can then exert pressure on Nicola Sturgeon because Scotland has got some parallels to this situation. Uh, in terms of Nicola Sturgeon not declaring independence either. Anyway, um, is there anything else you would like to add to this? Uh, I would like to say that we are under an enormous world-coordinated psychological warfare where we're being scared, where fake informations are being distributed about telling us not to show our flags in demonstration voting days and things and being told instead of pressuring up our government we're being encouraged to uh, stand by them whatever they decide and this knowing what we know because for four years we've known that all, everything in our side works for the enemy so now all this operation to give support to government whatever they may decide which we know that's been decided a long time ago, as far as six, seven years ago, they planned everything that's going on. So we have every reason to believe that we're going to be betrayed next week. But there's a number of growing people which are getting organized this and we're not going to accept this. And we're going to get 68, 69 or 135 members of parliament and declare independence ourselves. So when you say be betray, you mean that Puigdemont will come to some agreement with Rajoy and it will be postponing the referendum, as we said earlier. When when you've won twice... That would be betraying his people. After all, his people, Puigdemont's people, voted yes. And he has not given them what they voted for. Yes, but as far as people don't realize that our side is taking us for the biggest right in Catalan history, mm -hmm. there's no way that they're going to start thinking for themselves. We need to be able to think for ourselves and imagine, if I'm for independence and I watch Puigdemont, what would I do? And then they realize that things would be very different. This is simil very similar to Scotland and my, my frustration in general is that there is, an enorm there is an enormous number of people who are hugely supportive of the SNP and the response when I ask questions like, well, the SNP are not declaring independence, the SNP don't even talk about independence anymore and people say, oh yes, but they're the only party in Scotland that's even representing independence so we have to trust them we have to believe in them and we you know we love Nicola and we, we, all this sort of story it's very same very similar yes but the SNP it is hard to say but the SNP has the objective of avoiding independence at the service of the UK that's why there was that campaign to push every grassroots to join SNP and that's the plan then Scotland cannot win if both sides work for the union which is the same as here it's the same, but it's, it's the same it's everywhere. Same it's controlled the opposition, 
and it's us thinking that we have choices, but we don't have choices. No. The powers that be, the psychopaths that run the world, offer us fake choices. So everybody has to choose horses in races that belong to the same owner, the New World Order. Well, who knows what the next week is going to bring, uh, the next few weeks. Certainly for people outside of Catalonia who might be listening, if anybody's listening, as I say every week, there is a lot of tension here. There are political conversations taking place in the streets, in the cafes, much more than there was previously before the referendum. And there is a lot of tension. But if we make the effort as we have to, uh, the seeing life as a film uh, and knowing what the director has in mind, knowing who the director is, helps to put things in perspective. We have to understand that the happy ending means Catalonia to stay in Spanish because the director and producer is Spain. And if we go to a film before the happy ending, which for them is a lost referendum, they need to create the dramatic tension. It's, it's like a film. To, to, to reach the, the happy ending before that, you need the good guys to be in a lot of trouble, but then magically reach where they want to, and that's the stage we're seeing. Yes, well, you know, in the world of filmmaking, when, when you write a script, um, you build up tension to a certain point where it's in intense, and then you have, to, you have to break that tension because you can't keep building up. So at the moment, the script is about building tension, building fear, and it is working brilliantly. So when negotiation is magically offered... I'll clarify this way. Spain, Spanish people have been told that no referendum will ever happen. And then you have independentist people that we know we've already won. So now they have to coerce 45 million Spanish and Catalan people, the Spanish to go up towards a referendum, and the Catalan wants to go down so they can meet in the agreed referendum position. So you need to coerce and manipulate 45 million people to the end, and you need to put them in the agreed referendum because you cannot read a referendum without a referendum being held. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of situations in schools, in mainstream schools, where because you, you need to have all children going along the same curriculum path, so you in any class you'll have clever ch very clever children, and then you'll have children who are struggling. And in general, those children are all brought to a common level. That, that's similar, but the, the thing we need to look at that this is a war on poor against poor or people not ruling the world against people not ruling the world from Spain and Catalonia. The, the same puppeteer is running both sides and we need to gather people from any country in the world and that this is very important. First, we might liberate Catalonia, but this goes so much beyond independence. We need to have a country where education uh, makes people think instead of making them obedient servants and where media are there to inform us instead of making us idiots and disinformed us. And whichever country comes first, we should use that as a platform to liberate the rest of the world. And that's what we're fighting. I'm going to say one last thing and it's going to be a personal, very personal um, reflection. And then I'm going to leave you to add whatever you would like to this, okay? And the thing which comes to me a lot is I'm one person, you're one person, we know there's a, a few other people who think like us. There is not a lot, right? We well, know there's this, but some, hundreds. But, I can speak for hundreds in Catalonia. Okay, okay, well, there aren't enough. We need no. more. But sometimes I say to myself, and actually other people have said this to me, when I, when I question things and, and I say, you know, you shouldn't believe the official line, and I get shown photographs of millions of Catalan people marching with the question, what you think all these people are wrong? And I think, you, you, well, do, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't, I don't remember if I did it also in the English version, because, well, I in the Catalan version, I accepted to being one of the biggest idiots in my country ever. I don't know if I went as far as to do it in two languages, because that might be a bit bad for my self-esteem. <laughs> but I said it like this. I mean, for 23 years, I have been in contact with the biggest traitors that run our land. And it took me 23 years to realize that all these fights and postponements and all the things they said is because they worked for Spain. And it took me 23 years and I have a degree, I speak languages, and I had a professional life which is successful. And I knew them. So with all these things that should have helped me to realize, it took me 23 years. 
It's not a matter of us, we're not more intelligent, we're not more patriots, we're not more anything that people hasn't seen it. We are a team, we are the people of Scotland, we are the people of Catalonia, and it has to be played to the advantage of us all, that some of us, because our position, our information, our education, our free thinking, or whatever it is, we're putting this information and we're taking risk for the benefit of a whole nation. We are all needed, there's no better and worse independentists. There's independents who are already aw awake, and there's millions of independents that need to awake, conquer the shock of betrayal, and declare independence ourselves. We are all necessary. Okay, um, I'm going to step back out now and leave you to add anything that you want to talk about in English. Okay, so for me, thanks very much everybody for listening. Um, it's been a bit of a, a rant this week and probably will be next week, but I hope that we're bringing some message to you that you're not going to get through mainstream media and please share it, share it, share it as much as you can. Thanks very much. Over Thank you very you. much. Over to you. Guanyarem. Guanyarem. This is Hidrian Video. Coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KE Video Production. Good afternoon, this is David Ravantos in this week 16 in Radio Hadrian. This week has been special because uh, we've had here in Catalonia Cheryl Scott from uh, Gay Radio supporting the independentist movement here in Catalonia which is something else to add to the opportunity we're given here. An opportunity that we cannot get nowhere else in Scotland or Catalonia to tell the truth about both our processes. As you know, there's been a referendum here, we commented before, um, last week, and we still don't have independence. And there's a lot of tension on what might happen next week. And uh, as much as we don't like to speculate, but we'd like to outline what the possibilities are and what's being on stake here in Catalonia because so much more is at stake than just Catalan independence. The the reason we've been centered this week, normally we promote this program in hundreds or dozens of groups, both in Catalan groups and Scottish groups, before and after the program, 15 seconds after I did my post in my world to start promoting, I got a notification from Facebook saying that I was prohibited from posting for a week. The week they're gonna murder Catalan independence, so they don't want uncomfortable, unconvenient witnesses there. And Radio Adrian is a very inconvenient witness. So that's why we ask you to please make an extra effort this week, those of you who are listening to us. We need you all to avoid them murdering independence, because if they murder independence in Catalonia, they're one step closer to murder independence in Scotland. What we are talking about here is an enormous black operation to murder Catalan independence that has been lasting for decades and years in the years last years has intensified. The possibilities for Catalan independence died in 2010 but as they say we made it because we didn't know it was impossible so we've been fighting something that technically was impossible because our enemy controls every political party, social organization, mainstream media and uh, Facebook group practically to make it impossible for us to get independence with all kind of uh, psychological war warfare and boiling the Catalan frog little by little, get it through the motions for six years, always thinking that the independence is around the corner, but it's not. And the importance here, and that's why they need to censor us, and that's why we need to get out, it's because we're saying what's gonna happen before it happens. Can you imagine the importance if there had been a tiny radio station days before 9-11 saying oh there's gonna be some planes hitting the Twin Towers and they will collapse and a lot of people will die well they would have made it impossible for them to do it the way they did isn't it so that's what we're talking here it's the importance of having forewarned that the plan is to murder independence through a Scottish style referendum in 2019 so that's why it's important that you help us get the message out so they will have to counter program us what we're talking in Catalonia is one of these controlled opposition or pretend to live in democracy but offer no real choice. 
and it's not different elsewhere. And I'll choose seven uh, or six uh, fake conflicts in the world. We have pro Indian Catalonia and Madrid, which is fake. People want it, people deserve it, people have won it. But our leaders work are in cahoots, they're agents of Spain. So it doesn't happen. The same is in SNP against Westminster. It's also a, a fake fight. We are supposed to rally behind the SNP because Westminster knows for sure that SNP won't deliver. But it applies to Tories and Labour as well. None of them is a real challenge to the system. And it applies also to NATO versus ISIS. Islamic State is a NATO creation, so they just pretend to fight to keep us all hooked to this uh, multi-billion uh, years lasting film we call world and the same is between uh, democrats and republicans and the same is between u.s government and wikileaks they all work together to keep us hooked so no matter which side you choose united states government or wikileaks nato isis democrats republicans stories labor smp Westminster, pro indy madrid you are playing for the teams of the owners of the world so that's the idea it's like you pretend you have a chance but you don't and that's why the things are so important. We had a referendum here on Sunday. We won by a landslide. That puts Catalonia in a sad position of being the only country, as far as I know, that has had two mandates, one through elections two years ago and one through referendum last week, and still not have declared independence. So we are the kings of moral victories here. That's why I always say we have an Arc de Triomphe here in Barcelona, but I still haven't for the life of me figured that what triumph that might be. Maybe the tribe that's waiting to happen. So this program wants to pay homage to the hundreds of thousands, millions of Catalans that defied Spanish violence with almost 900 wounded people serving as human shields, waiting the night before, doing long queues, uh, old people, young people, all kind of Catalans that wanted not only democracy, not only voting, not only human rights, because you remember when this all started, it was about independence. Independence. It's not so difficult. Independence. This is about independence. After the referendum, we're still waiting for a declaration of independence to happen. The 3rd of October, there was a, there was a strike uh, nationally and millions of people marched together, but it was not about the independence. It was about we voted and to criticize the Spanish violence that has been seen all over the world. And days go on and we still don't know what will happen. Because the plan of the world that we announce here is to murder independence, but pretend there's democracy avoid a domino effect, kill independence for 50 or 100 years, avoid the malls being exposed, and on top of that to mock us for having tried. And everything is according to plan. And I'll put an example. Um, Spanish police found the ballot boxes. Didn't find the ballot boxes, but found electoral uh, ballots, uh, the papers that were supposed to notify people to be in electoral tables, posters, all that was found. But uh, Ballot boxes were not found. And then they say that 700,000 votes were taken over by Spanish police, considering that two, more than 2 million people, 2 million 40 voted for yes and 176 voted for no. The brains are led to believe that out of 7,000, then 600 are going to be for yes as well. So that puts us over 2 million and a half. That means we cannot lose. If this votes vote again, we cannot lose. But we don't know that yet. And then violence. And all these three things, disappearing votes, violent police repression, and that they could not find the ballot boxes, are in, in a brave new world, in the happy world of uh, we live in, are Catalan victories. They managed to do a referendum where there's more votes that couldn't be counted, and the Spanish violence give a bad image to the world. Sadly, and that's why we always say that first we need 10,000 heroes to wake up the other 3 million people. This requires a lot of information, free thinking, and certain intelligence on the first people to see it. So we are targeting especially that, that people, those people. Because they let the referendum happen, but they made sure there was no guarantee. So they didn't find the ballot boxes because they were not looking for them. And these votes that are missing, they're not going to serve to deliver independence. 
they're just there to give us the impression that when the real thing happens in two years time we'll win that's deception it's a Trojan horse it's a Trojan horse to let us believe that when the real moment comes which possibly they will announce soon about the referendum then we'll win and the violence is the same thing normally violence would serve to put people to your side but now violence is being used to force a negotiator which is treason we have already won 2015 we won in 2017 whoever leads a winning army to beg for negotiation can only be a traitor and some things don't have documents or some things they just are proven by intellectual processes there's an intellectual process that says that whoever's in your side that works for the other side, it's a traitor. It doesn't need to sign a contract, it doesn't need to say that public. Whoever who works for the enemy privately is a traitor, and we are run by traitors. And now we are here waiting to see what's happened, which has been written in advance. And that's why I want to put an historical example of the violence happening here with the good cop, bad cop, uh, never better said, because they had Catalan police act as the good cop who didn't do the bad things, and Spanish police doing the bad things. But they all work together. We've seen it a thousand times in films. The good cop to give you confidence, and the bad cop uh, being nasty to you. So then you mellow out to one of them, and you confess, and then you've lost. So that's what we see here, but a bit uh, big, uh, royal size. And um, the question, the whole question now is that that violence, I'll put the historical act, example as I said. Before Second World War, the secret pact between uh, von Ribbentrop for Germany and Molotov for the Soviet Union caused an agreement to divide Poland after the war and other agreements in Eastern Europe that were kept secret at that point. And that had effects because in Spanish Civil War, the side that was supposed to oppose Franco was let down and betrayed by its own side and Soviet Union because Hitler needed Spanish uh, civil war to finish before embarking in Second World War. But the point I'm making here is the nasty images were from Nazis uh, overtaking Poland, but that wouldn't have been possible hadn't been for the secret pact with the Soviets, isn't it? That's what happened here. Three days before the referendum, there was the Junta de Seguridad, which normally brings bad news. They reunited after 10 years without getting together and bang, the next month Barcelona attacks happen and then they get together three days before the referendum and then there's the worst scenes of street violence exerted by police in 40 years here. Well, uh, you wouldn't want to live close to these guys of Junta Seguridad or do anything related to them because they're really jinxed. Everything they do, is it? So it's the same thing as Nazis and Soviets. The Spanish police has been giving the bad photographs and we know it's, they've hit them harder in front of cameras to make it bigger. I wonder if they've got bonus to appear on television. So now everything and the new mantra has appeared. They pushed us towards a referendum and now the question is lots of pro the politicians. Every communication media that is supposed to be in the pro indie side Every man and his dog is pushing now for negotiation, mediation, and all that. I'm sorry, but we didn't risk our lives. We didn't get fired rubber bullets. We didn't get pulled by our hairs. We didn't get intimidated. We didn't get threatened by the occupation forces of the Spanish state. So now you can negotiate and murder independence by a Scottish-style referendum. I'm sorry, but that's totally not on. And now, we, I would like to outline the ways they can lie to us. Once you realize what the game is about, the only interest is to see how the di director of this film we call World is going to reach the objectives they have outlined. And now it's, there has to be a negotiation. So now they have to find ways so they don't declare independence in an unconditional, irreversible, immediate way. And that's why they have postponed it to next Tuesday. They've given nine days to Spain to terrorize Catalans with moving of banks, companies, uh, uh, fear that money won't be available in banks, all kind of uh, uh, psychological terrorism, psychological warfare, 
to scare people against independence, against UDI. You know it, because it's the same thing they do in uh, Scotland about the Ulster and Rhodesia and uh, all these big uh, monsters that they... Phantoms, they appear to scare you from UDI, which means scaring you from independence, because only UDI brings independence. So now, for next week, we have to uh, we have to wait for either a declaration of independence, but with a clause that in case of international mediation it could be stopped, or with a condition that elections in six more time in six months time should be won by the pro side, which they can rig and never happen. Or they can have some people from the pro indie side vote against unilateral declaration of independence so it doesn't happen. Or we can have Spain taking over and applying instead of siege or similar articles in the constitution. So a poor side couldn't declare independence even though they tried as hard as they could. Except they didn't. Because had they declared immediately the night, all those things that are going on couldn't have happened, could it? So those that collaborate to create the conditions with the enemy, so the enemy can stop independence, are still worse than the enemy we see. There's nothing worse than betraying your own side, wearing the cassock of your enemy under the Catalan army cassock. And that's what we're dealing here. There's important to mention how they have counter-programmed us and how Radio Adrian is already being the child in the story, telling that the emperor is naked. But we need as Delia mentioned before, many more children that is uh, telling how this emperor is naked. But the question is, a lot of things are telling of independence. And we should have had unionist marches before the referendum, which didn't happen. We should have had the Spanish stock market crashing the day after the referendum because we were at the doors of independence. We should have had the king speaking to Spain the same night or the next day, and that didn't happen until Tuesday. And all these threats about companies moving away, that should also have started before the referendum or the day after. None of these four things happened, which kind of tells you that independence, as far as Monday last week, was not in the books, because none of the effects you would expect happened. But then, bang, surprise, we mentioned in the program that they're not going to declare independence, and then we start commenting how weird it is that the market only went down 1.21 when you would expect like, it to crash and have to close. And then, bang, the king appears out of nowhere and makes a speech that didn't change things. And then, Wednesday, the third day, the market goes down, nothing spectacular, but every media uh, magnifies it and makes it bigger than it was. And then they attribute it, in some press we've read, to the king's speech. So it is like, oh dear, we have been found. We, we have been too lazy. We haven't crashed the stock market. We haven't put the king out. We haven't threatened with companies leaving. We haven't done unionist marches. We haven't done any of the things that a big super production like lying to the Catalan people would have required. So they had to counter-program and they've had to have them at last minute, too late, and to counter-program us. So now, the question is, will they go the whole length? Will they go the last mile and counter-program us now? We are saying here, they don't want independence. So now, it's their turn to prove us wrong. That's the only way to get independence. A lot of people come to us some in good faith and a lot of them in bad faith say, oh, now if they declare independence, it means you've been wrong all the time. Correction. We have proven left, right and center in the 15 weeks previous to this that the indie field, both in Catalonia and Scotland, are run by people working for the other side. And we have forced them to uh, take decisions they possibly they wouldn't have wanted to. And now they might be willing to give Catalonia independence as far as the negotiations then are very bad for Catalonia and we take a lot of that we shouldn't take and with lots of loopholes and the worst case because what there is at stake here is so much bigger than Catalonia. Catalan dissidents are compromised as well because we are, some of us are Scottish. Uh, we are compromised with the independence of Scotland as well. And if independence of Catalonia arrives through the hands of dissidents that are going to unveil 
how treason and infiltration has been going over for decades and everything we love in Catalonia works for Spain, it would take about seven minutes for people to realize that the story is the same in Scotland. And it would be the same in Euskal Herria, in Flanders, in Corsica, in Veneto, you name it. And the world would never be the same and NATO will break and European Union will break and people will start questioning 9-11, all this false flag, who's behind ISIS, what's the real story about AIDS, how psychiatry is used as a weapon to repress political dissidents. All these things were there in the open. And then, then we would have a real option to bring down the new world order and to make a better world for 99.99% .99 of people in this country, and this world. And that's what's at stake here. We are forcing them to something they didn't want to do. To try to protect everything else they want to keep. So make no mistake, rallying behind the traitors that have been postponing independence both in Scotland and in Catalonia for years, if not decades, that's not the way to get independence. That's the way to keep doing rigorendums, to go after dangling carrots and to be a frog that gets boiled little by little and by friendly people that they uh, seem to work for you but they work for the other side. That's what's at stake here. Uh, I'd like to talk about two things of international interest here, which are one, Piqué, Iniesta and FC Barcelona have appeared at the scene. Piqué, a famous football player, they've been propping him up for two years uh, with his tweets and all. He's been whistled when he played for the Spanish team and all that have been staged. And we came back to the film image. When some famous actor like Piqué is, has appeared in a scene two years ago, it's because he's going to be relevant uh, later. That scene is relevant. So all this propping up of uh, Gerard Piqué as a defender of Catalonia had a reason. And now is that he's saying, he says he's not an independentist. He says we have a problem in Spain instead of a problem with Spain, which kind of clarifies that he considers himself Spanish. And he hasn't abandoned, even when our countrymen have been decimated or hit and wounded, he wouldn't even leave a uh, Spanish team. And he's talking about, you know, the new mantra, negotiation, dialogue, let's all talk, let's all be friends, and all these things. That is a nice way to murder independence. They've done the hard way, and now they're going to do a nice negotiating way to give euthanasia to Catalan independence. And Iniesta, which is the most respected Barca player in Spain, uh, because he scored the winning goal in the World Championship uh, Spain got in 2010, have done the same thing. And to top it up, FC Barcelona, which has a president that is president because Sandro Rossell was threatened by Spanish secret services to quit, has said that he offers FC Barcelona to mediate between Catalonia and Spain. And that should come as a surprise, surprise, because mediate means you have a position of neutrality and you're in between things. And considering Barca singing for independence and we have so many indie flags and it's always been considered the Catalan team, the Catalan army, how can it be considered him to be a mediator? You can only mediate between two parts if the two parts are only pretending to have a disagreement. You can mediate between two friends because there's nothing to mediate, isn't it? But you, they don't need a mediator. What they need is an excuse. We have two sides here that are agreeing to murder independence. Puigdemont, Junqueras, all the Catalan parties, all the, all the usual suspects. They don't need a mediator because they already have reached an agreement. What they need is a pretext, an excuse. They're going to get close in, in a closed room and they're going to start talking about holidays next summer because they already have an agreement to murder independence. They're just going to be there talking about whoever whatever they want, and then they come out and they announce us that after long, tiring negotiations, they have finally reached an agreement. And the agreement will be a postponed referendum that we lose because then it's the real one. They've let us win two mock referendums in 2014, and this, which is a real referendum, but they're not going to use to declare independence, and then the final one will lose. Like these tricksters that have somebody that works with them that pretend to find where the ball is under three goblets and they let a friend of them to win twice 
And then the third time round, when it's the true time, and when the naive person who's watching and doesn't know it's a trick puts all the money where his heart is, then he gets lost. He loses his money. He loses everything. So, Piqué, Iniesta, and FC Barcelona are also participating in this super big Hollywood production that includes false flag attack in Barcelona one month ago and FC Barcelona, Nicola Sturgeon praising the Edinburgh Agreement, Alex Salmon uh, speaking here, talking about human rights and right to decide, United Nations, Wikileaks, you name it, you name it, it's one of the biggest super productions in, uh, in European history. So, now as we keep waiting, last thing I would want to mention is we've had Daniel Stullen making a cameo here or a star appearance. For those who don't know, Daniel Stullen uh, says that he is an ex-KGB agent. We've mentioned, I think, some other times that agents never stop being agents. And if you are information disinformation, it's not something you retire when you're 65 and then you can start spilling the beans, isn't it? They have confidentiality agreements and they have fear for their own life. So they don't start... You never stop being an agent. And Daniel Stulin, who's an expert in uh, Bilderberg Club and who I tried to contact in 2014, uh, telling him that I knew how to bring down uh, Spain and um, UK by uh, letting out the infiltration and the rigging uh, in Scotland. He ignored me, which is something that has happened a lot of times. These years it has happened with Chomsky, with Snowden, with David Icke, and uh, with all of these people that now we can only look or accept as limited hangouts. Well, he ignored me. He has, has appeared in Catalan television twice or three times to talk about saying that WikiLeaks is a, is a false flag, in which he is true. But Daniel Stulin is lying by telling 97% of truth, but then lying with the last three, which is a classical gatekeeper or limited hangout. And what Daniel Stulin has said in Ragu, which is a, is a very big radio station here, is that, yeah, hold your seats because that's a, that's a good one, but the sky's the limit when surrealism hits. Daniel Stulin said, Catalan should relax because None else than the CIA wants and supports the Catalan independence. And that's why we should relax because as the CIA wants it, it's going to happen. Which has some tiny, itchy, little uh, defects in this reasoning. Which one is CIA works for NATO and NATO don't want a member party to disintegrate. And that should be enough. But another tiny detail that should have been uh, mentioned to Mr. Daniel Stulin is that had CIA wanted independence, we would have already got it a long time ago, something like in 1975, or at least in 2009, where people started wanting independence, or in 2013, when we did a human chain and we had 40 points advantage. Why should the CIA go through the motions of mock referendums, postponing things? Uh, why should the CIA go through the motions of Murdering Muriel Casals and lock me in a mental institution and torturing me? For sure? No, not really, Stulin. We're not buying it. And neither should you. So, we're going to leave it here. Whatever happens next week, uh, we'll have to keep alert because it had effects everywhere else in the world. Uh, please help promote this program any way you can. We'll keep you informed. And we'll keep expecting what next week might bring. Maybe it is independence and then no matter how hard they attack us, we're going to have a very private celebration and we're going to be very happy because we're going to know that it is the victory, not only of the whole Catalan people that deserves it, but it's a very special victory for the dissidents that would have, had, would have made the masters. Those that think that are gods and masters of the universe have to accept defeat and make this for them another peaceful Vietnam. We are about to win, let's do this. Guanyarem! This is Hedrian Radio, coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KE Radio production.